<clears throat> Your Smallest Bones by Sean Taylor A Collection of Short Stories Part 11 What You're Waiting For I was in the shower, measuring my pinkies, when it happened. And after five minutes of deliberation, it turns out they were deadlocked. But I wanted my left one to be stronger, thicker, and of better use. Throughout my entire life, I played favorites, and today, inevitably, was the day of the pinkies. The water ran down in a manner all too casual and forgiving. I just ended a relationship a week prior, and whenever the thought of her entered my mind, I proclaimed to the shower and forever. Besides, my fingernails always seem so much longer in the shower. I could stand there all day and measure all of my lefts with all of my rights, and I could play favorites and mostly be a little less than lonely. My stomach growled. It was 2.30 in the afternoon, and I was becoming rather hungry. It was hard to think about food. I just woke up from a nasty hangover in an empty bed and said to the shower and forever. It was a busy year. It was the same year I stopped blessing people after they sneezed. And it became long enough in that right alone. Winter finally came on like an exhale. A long, moist one after a year of sighing the months away. The Consumer Electronics Trade Show back in June had finally belted out something that would change everything. These scientists finally figured it out. They could finally detect earthquakes. I always assumed that field of science to be dead and lost, that everyone in that big science building went down to the hall to cancer studies or to weapons manufacturing. What doesn't kill you? It was slightly conversational and vaguely powerful. These seismologists built this machine and dropped it deep into the earth and let it tug and pull at all of our continental shelves. They did it with huge magnets, you know, that were always either pushing or pulling, and we were always listening. It was like nagging your parents into spanking you. How much these devices caused or detected the earthquakes was unknown. We just had to know it was coming, even if we were the cause. Of course, the first problem was due to the depth of these charges. The signal would take 5 to 10 minutes to reach us, and at first everything would be 5 to 10 minutes too late, telling us something we already knew. So they sped up the signal. And now everyone gets a warning of 5 to 10 minutes prior to the earthquake. Everyone called that period of time the window. Everyone asked what you did in the window yesterday, in that window, and everyone always remembered, too. Pacific Gas and Electric bought up all the shares and installed these radios into every household. They looked kind of like smoke detectors, and if you don't pay your utility bills on time, they simply do not work. We were all afraid of not knowing. 
of the unknown. It was either that, or you too can be alone in a city aware of an oncoming nightmare. I was in the shower when it happened. The movie phone guy comes out full bore and starts yelling at me. He says, there'll be an earthquake in five to ten minutes. I had only just figured out the length of my pinkies. I was to the shower and forever. He was slightly conversational and vaguely powerful. I thought to stay in the shower and let it go. The biggest fault of this new earthquake detection was that there was no way of knowing if it was going to be a bump, a thud, or a thunderstorm. We knew something was wrong, but we didn't know what, or to what degree. I have a shower radio with a clock. I was hungry, and I had five minutes to get out and get dressed and run straight into Golden Gate Park, which was a two-minute jog or 30-second sprint from my house. I decided not to decide. My stomach still unkempt. I found a vein, a thin blue one that ran up my left pinky finger, but with no twin vein from my right pinky. And after carefully studying them for two minutes, I came to the conclusion that we are not ink blots of symmetry. That scars and, well, life saves us from our own identities by identifying them. My pinky, I said to myself, is my pinky's pinky. Another big inhale. And then I got to wonder... If I was still drunk from last night, if this was a hangover, or if my teeth did hurt as often as they shouldn't, and <sighs> exhale. There will be an earthquake in the next two to seven minutes, blares the living room. After that warning, they will count down to the window. The five minutes of quiet when everyone waits. Everyone either says, shh, or did you hear that? San Francisco was the first city to install these devices. And they backfired in the most peculiar way. These groups sprouted up these earthquake fan clubs, bloggers, and forums of people. When they first heard these alarms, first the five-minute warning, then the declining others, they would run into their homes instead of out of them. These people would run indoors in the five minutes and get into beds and get naked and fuck in the window. There were even retrofitted hotels that specialized in it. They rented by the window, and the water beds cost $20 extra. That's what they called it. Fucking in the window. For a whole new kind of thrill seeker. I know, because I was one of them. I worked up the street on 9th Avenue, waiting tables, so... And so did my then-future former girlfriend, except she was on 8th Avenue. When the alarms came on, all our co-workers would run to the baseball field off Lincoln Way, and we would just sprint home. The adrenaline from the run and the countdown was the greatest aphrodisiac ever invented. It was like racing to get naked because you were skinny-dipping in the spa in Alaska. Those earthquakes made the air still like Alaska. Now she is gone, and I am alone in the shower with two minutes 
till the hiccup or the great collapse. I suppose I'll wait this out. I start to think of all the other people in this city in the shower when the alarms go off. I am, I think, with them right now. I figure maybe I'm mostly alone. They're all running down staircases or falling down fire escapes, some of them naked, some of them wearing towels. Mostly probably naked, though. And there were others, too. This group that started up online, some guy started it. He said when the alarm starts going off, he's staying in. But he'll have a light on that sits in his bay window. And if anyone wanted to join him for the big bump that they were welcome. He would have cookies and drinks, and nobody should be alone in such a state of emergency. Of course, quite a few others followed, and it was a huge thing in the Castro. In fact, an entire dating scene started with unlit lamps left in night windows. The lamps would be removed as soon as they were in a committed relationship, unless they were into that kind of thing. I've heard of uh, webcam races to see who could build the biggest house of cards before the earthquakes hit. They built these indoors, too, inside their very own house of cards. Somebody said it was a metaphor or something. The first alarm was the starting gun. And what a whistle it was. I, I saw a video uh, of one once. The This guy was sweating so much that the cards stuck to his hands then to themselves. All the judges ruled it cheating and he was just crushed at the end. Fig figuratively crushed. It turned out that Earthquake was just a baby tremor. I did it too. After she left, I put a, a lamp out. The problem being, my window only faced my backyard, and it would only be visible from the courtyard of surrounding backyards. It was there, though, and to be able to say that was enough, then to remove it someday was enough. The wedding ring you take off when you get married. It is nearly insane and impossible how impractically important these symbols became when we knew our world was about to shake and change to fall apart. It was to stay the same. Yet here I stand, with one minute left, just staring at my toes. I know my shoes as well as the way I have walked for the last 24 years have pushed my toes into different directions. I know about the displacement of weight, weaker muscles due to vitamin deficiencies, shallow bones. All these factors adding up to the difference between the left and the right. I got to wondering if babies are completely symmetrical. They say that symmetry correlates rather closely to beauty. Perhaps this is why babies are so cute, so beautiful. I was once a baby too. All right, let's do this. I don't dry off or put on socks. I don't grab my phone or my wallet. My jeans are half zipped and my shirt is showing wet. When I'm running down the street, the hard asphalt wears away at the tiny rings on my toes. As I chase crowds, I can hear the birds sing, my hands in tight fists. On 8th Avenue, I trip over an uneven slab of sidewalk and go down painfully. Fast and hard. I go down wrist and hand first. Sliding into the sandpaper of the street, the alarms they placed on most all the city corners are blaring all around me. The countdown is seconds from the five minute window and I am a pleading mess. 
I know now that shower got me so far from anything soft or safe or clean. By the time I get to the park, I can see all of them. All of the singles. They're milling about with cigarettes like they're waiting on test results. They stand around looking at their watches or phones, talking about the nothing before the big something. They scratch at their impatience with their new favorite fingernails. I swear, it's a bar without any booze on the field. No one thought to bring a kite or a football, something to throw around while the big one finally hits. And then it occurs to me, this crowd would rather be with someone in danger than safe and alone. I can see their glazed over eyes stare at a bright pink Victorian off 7th Avenue in Lincoln, where strangers rush in with the same speed I had rushed out to the park. I thought about safety. I thought about hearing a tree fall in the woods and nobody believing you. I have, however, come to find that my broken, bloody hands and my pinkies, for that matter, look completely identical to each other after the fall. I can no longer play favorites. I have become a symmetrical ink blot, though a rather messy one. I feel born again. And I fall back into the grass. The adrenaline coupled with my newly married features, leaving me a bit breathless dizzy. I have my ear to the ground, dirt on my cheek, listening to the angry belly of this earth. I can feel some ants drawn to the sweet sugar of my blood begin to congregate on my broken wrists.